Well, good morning. I'm sure glad to see you here safe and sound. We've been praying for you, been praying for our entire region and for our state as we are facing the biggest catastrophic natural disaster Texas has seen in 47 years. And we are standing in faith with you and your family and with all of those around our city, our region, our state that we want to see God be glorified through this, and we want to see people's lives be changed through this, not just for the negative. And I believe that God wants to use His church to do something like that. I, I believe that's what the church is here for. We have been positioned for such a time as this to be a light to darkness, to be a city that's set on the side of the hill, to be a hope to hopelessness, to be a faith to fear. We, we don't need to get wrapped up in all of the, the craziness of what the media may do, but this is a very serious situation. I was just in the in the in the back there praying in between services and and decided to check the news and and now the the the, the rain has really shifted towards uh, Houston and they are receiving six inches an hour. Uh, Maria Armitage, Johannes's wife, her brother lives there. His entire street is underwater, and now they have almost. Uh, one third of downtown completely underwater. So we need to be praying. We're going to be talking about that today. We need to know what we can do as a church yeah. in times like this. We're on this series covered all about grace, and I felt the Holy Spirit shift this over the weekend and lead me away from what I thought was going to be the grand finale for today, and we're going to push that back to next week, and we're going to look at what it looks like to walk in grace in times that are troubled. How do we walk in grace in tough times like this? How do, how do we be that beacon of hope and that beacon of light? What is God expecting from us, and what are others looking to us to be? I just read on, on the news that a lady that people have resorted to using Twitter. The, 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 the headline said this that people are turning to Twitter for help. I want them to be able to turn to the church for help. I want them to be able to turn to God for help. And we want to be a part of that. So in tough times like this, it's sometimes hard to have the right answers. Whether it's a natural disaster or a terrorist attack or whatever it could be, there's people are looking for answers. They're looking at how and why and, and where do we go from here. And, and most often those people are going to turn to people of faith. They're going to turn to people of faith either to question them in a negative way or to try to pull from them some kind of hope and assimilate some kind kind of idea of what in the world is going on. And we want to be able to be that church that helps those that are in need. Amen. Yeah. And so I want to talk to you today about what that looks like. How do we walk through times of trouble and how do we encourage others in times of trouble? How do we walk in the grace of God? How do we become the grace of God, the tangible grace of God to people's lives? And number one for today is this, that we must learn but also must teach others to trust in God in times of trouble. That's what the grace of God is here for. Remember, truth exposes, but grace covers. And if grace is going to cover, then grace is going to take care of everything under its umbrella. But we've got to go to the one who is the source of grace. We've got to trust in the one who is the giver of of grace. So we've got to learn how to trust in God in these times of trouble. And we've got to be able to say that and communicate that to others who are looking for help. I've got a friend down in between here in Houston who is a self-proclaimed atheist, but now is texting me and saying, can you pray? And I said, yes. Can your church pray? Yes. Our church will pray for you. Because in the end, that's what it's all about. We want people to be able to turn to God. And we, the church, are God's representatives. We are the ambassadors of Christ. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are the change agent in the earth. We are the extension of God. So when people are wanting to know what to do in times of trouble, they may cry out to God, but they're going to be looking to the church to see what the church is willing to do. Well, we act like, well, it hasn't affected me personally, so why do I really need to get involved? 
I can tell you it's affected people in our personal family. Some people have their streets underwater that attend Reach Church. Some have no power and have no power for days. I was talking with people in the lobby after first service that were here that have no power still. And they, they came to worship. They came to give. They came to be a part of making a difference in other people's lives. Let's look at this scripture together. It's so surreal for the moment we're facing now in central and southeast Texas. It says this in Psalm 46, verses 1 through 3, God is our refuge and our strength. The government can't be our refuge and our strength in times like this. Your neighbor may not be able to be your refuge and your strength. The, the, the system can't be your refuge and your strength. God and God alone is your refuge and your strength. I'm saying this to encourage you but also equip you to be able to help others that are going through tougher times than maybe you are. Look what it says that he is. He is always ready to help in times of trouble. That's my God. That's the God we serve. He's not looking to say, ha, I told you your nation's turning away from me and now look what you, that's, that's nonsense. And churches that breathe that should be smacked. Sorry. Maybe corrected gently, then smacked, right? So God is our refuge and strength. He is always ready to help in times of of trouble. So God's people, look at now, we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. We will not fear when the oceans roar and foam. That's happening right now. When the mountains trouble and the waters surge. God knows. Do you know that nothing is a surprise to God? There's nothing that happens that's a surprise to God. He's prepared to help. He's wanting to use his change agent. He's wanting to use his city on the side of the hill. He's wanting to use his people to be that help in this time of trouble. And I want to be that as a church family. I want you to know how to walk people through tough times. I'm sure you'll get calls. I'm sure you'll run into coworkers or neighbors later down the road when this is all over and they'll say, some will say, if God was real, how did he let this happen? And you can tell them because we don't live in God's world right now. This world is broken and it's under the system of the enemy, the scripture says. But the day when Jesus returns, he will bring peace to the earth. There will be no more storms, no more hurricanes. There will be no more death. There will be no more. That day is coming, but that day is not yet here. And in the meantime, when we are in this world and we meet troubled times and suffering, we know that we could turn to God because he will be our refuge and strength, and he's ready. He's waiting on us to help in these times of trouble. Amen? Number two, key ways to overcoming whether it's something you're facing, a friend is facing, some stranger you may run into. How do you overcome tough times? How do you overcome? How do you make sure that you keep the right attitude in times like this? How do you make sure that you help others keep the right attitude in times like this? And there's three keys to it. That you've got to keep hope because hope is the anchor for your soul. Hope keeps you from freaking out. Hope keeps you from stressing out. Hope keeps you from panicking and, and, and screaming doomsday from the top of the roof. And you've got to have patience. Patience is a virtue. Patience is a fruit of the Spirit. It's hard sometimes to have patience in tough times, but I can promise you this. It's going to take patience to walk through the results of what we're facing. And third is prayer. Never underestimate the power of prayer. We're going to take time today and pray for our city, for our region, for our state. We're going to pray all over because Jesus said that all of us are called to be a missionary. 
We're all called to be a missionary to our city, to our state, to our nation, and the world. It may not mean that you travel with a backpack full of food and just walk all over the jungles of Africa, but what it means is that you could pray for, you could help, you can give patience to, you can give hope to, you can give gifts to somebody that's in need in time of trouble. And that's the way that we overcome. Look at this in Romans 12, verse 12. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. And be constant in prayer. You want to be an overcomer? Rejoice in hope. Don't, 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 don't remorse in despair. Don't, don't cry out in fear. Rejoice in hope. Be patient. In tribulation, be patient during troubled times. Be patient with those that are that are in need. Be patient, even if you or yourself maybe you don't have power right now, and that stinks. I, I I hate that none of us that some of us may not, but there's people right now that their whole house is underwater. There's a mother right now. I just read it standing on a rooftop. Nine one one is so inundated she couldn't get through. She's talking to her family that called 911 in a different state to try to get some kind of help to this lady. She's standing with two children in her arms on a roof in, in Houston, Texas. We've got to be patient in tribulation, and we've got to be constant in prayer because prayer has power. Prayer is effective. Prayer works. And right now, our state needs our prayers. Our family members here at Reach Church they need our prayers. And we want to be that church that stands for them in the flesh, in the natural, but also in the supernatural. Amen? Last one. Now, let me give you this quote real quick. This is a good quote before we get there. Prayer is not overcoming God's reluctance, but laying hold of his willingness. That's good stuff right there, isn't it? That'll sink in for some of y'all later. Listen now. Prayer is not overcoming God's reluctance to help. Prayer is not overcoming God's reluctance to do something. He wants to. He's ready to. But prayer is laying a hold of his willingness to do it. Right? And we've got to pray. And we will. Number three. You ever watch the Three Musketeers? Some of y'all are just too old for that. Daniel's watching because he's a European. They're but French little mice running around with cute little swords and skinny jeans. And pointy shoes. That's, and that's where you get the stuff from, I guess, right? <laughs> Europeans. Yeah. But hear this now. They had a saying, one for all, and I reversed it for the church because I think it's a different perspective. All for one. Let that be our priority for it. First, as a family of God, all of us, we stand for the one. And each one of us, we stand for the all. Are you with me? That's what God is screaming in my spirit today. All for one and one for all. We can't make it through stuff like this alone, but we can together. When we stand united, we can make a difference in people's lives like never before. And that's part of the vision of Reach Church. If you call Reach Church home, you have adopted that vision to be a part of your life. That you want to know God. You want to find freedom. Discover your purpose. All of that leads to one thing so that you can make a difference in other people's lives. What a moment we have. Maybe one of the few moments in all of history like this of your lifetime that you'll have to make a real difference in people's lives. With your time, with your talent, with your treasure, with whatever God leads you to use to be able to make a difference in other people's lives. Look at Hebrews chapter 13 verse 16. And don't forget to do good and to share with those in need. You would think this was written today, not 2,000 years ago. Don't forget. I know God has blessed you. I know you're busy. I know you've got bills. I know you've got other things going on. But don't forget. Don't forget. I know, I know you don't got much time. But don't forget. Don't forget to do good and to share with those that are in need. 
Because there will come a day where all of us at some point, in some fashion, will be in need. And it's so reassuring when you know that you have given towards someone else's need. Because Jesus said, when you give, it will be given back to you. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. That's not just money. That's anything. You give love, it's coming back to you. You give time, it's coming back to you. You give help, it's coming back to you. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. These are the sacrifices that please God. Remember when he said, I'd rather have your obedience than your sacrifice, right? So why are these sacrifices the ones that please God? Because they are sacrifices of obedience. Are you with me? They're sacrifices of obedience. Look at this, Galatians chapter 6 verse 2. Share each other's burdens. And in this way, obey the word of God. We got to share each other's burdens. Why should I care about what's happening in in Houston? I'm in Northwest Austin and everything's okay right now or good enough. Because that's your family down there. There's brothers and sisters in Christ that are suffering. There's lost people that are on their way to hell and they need somebody to give them hope enough to believe in a God that they may have never seen but they can't encounter. And we are that agent. We are that extension. We are those ambassadors to do that. We should share each other's burdens. And in this way, we will be obeying the word of God. God wants both our obedience and our sacrifice in times like this. Do you agree? I'm going to tell you about two things we're going to be doing. We're going to be ending service a little bit early and a little bit different than we normally do it just because the rain is still coming. I know you, you've you braved the storm. Some of you all see here all the way out from Longa Vista and some from Taylor. And you guys have really blown my mind by showing up and worshiping God with us today. But I want to get you out here just a little bit early to just play it a little bit more safe than, than we normally do. But before we do, I want to tell you about two major ways that we're about to help. Those in Austin and those throughout South and southeastern Texas that are being affected even greater than Austin is with this storm. I just heard from one of our guys who owns a major landscaping company that there are uh, houses and trees that fallen down, telephone poles down, houses even underwater in some parts of South Austin. So it's not not affecting us. We just see that it's affecting others greater than it's affecting us, and we want to be able to help. There's two organizations reach church partners with on a continual basis but in times like this we want to step up and do even more one of them is called austin disaster relief network and they help those that are in austin when a natural disaster comes we give into them regularly throughout the year but right now we want to be able to help them both with volunteers and in our giving to be able to help them make a difference to those they don't go anywhere and help anyone without first bringing the gospel to them so it's a wonderful organization The second one is one of the world's largest mission-based organizations to help in times of need and disaster, and it's called Bridge of Hope. They do stuff all over the world. They've already converged. Every resource they have is converged and already landed in Texas, and they're outside Corpus Christi right now, but the government's not letting them through until the waters recede. But they're poised and they're ready to go to take tens and hundreds of thousands of pounds of food and clothes and water and aid to go help help people re build their lives. We want to partner with those, both in volunteering and in our giving. So I'll tell you how that's going to work. Right now, we've got to wait for this to recede before much can be done because otherwise you're just putting your life in great danger in doing that. But when that comes out, we will be networking through our life groups and through our dream team to let folks know when and where that we'll be going as a church to go help people that are in need. If it's too far away from here, we'll probably just charter a bus to be able to get us there and get us back. So there'll be more information to come. But until then, right now, there are organizations with their feet on the ground, and they're already actively helping people that have been fleeing. We've had people already, Rockport, Texas, has been completely wiped out. They don't think it'll ever recover. I saw a three-story apartment building with water up to the third floor. 
It's just absolutely gone. The mayor said he does not think the city will ever recover. It'll have to just be completely rebuilt at some day if they want a city there. And those people, a lot of them, they said over 50% of those people are looking to move to Austin and relocate their lives to Austin. I'm praying that they find a church like ours that will love them, that will help them, that will support them. And I want to make sure that we're doing something proactively on the front end and we are sowing into soil so that we can reap the harvest of help helping people come to Jesus through this and helping those that already know him trust even deeper in God. So those two things are going to take place. Number one, we're going to be helping in a physical way and we'll have more information. But two, today I'm doing things a little bit different on purpose is I want to take a time of reflection and I want to encourage you and challenge you today in your giving. I want us to all pray and ask God what God would have us do to give a little bit more above and beyond what we maybe maybe normally give give to help somebody that is in need. We are a church, total both campuses wide, of almost 1,500 people. If everybody gave $20, we can give $30,000 into missions right now. If everybody gave 50, we can give almost $100,000 into missions right now. Like that's what the difference we all can make. I don't like pressure. I don't like giving numbers and saying you have to give this. That's nonsense. That's not from God. What I do like though is I like encouraging you, telling you what I believe God God is wanting to do and giving you time to pray and reflect. What will God have you do in this time? Because I can promise you, every single penny given will be literally written out in a check by the end of the day today, and it'll be in the hands of those two organizations by tomorrow to help them get help to those that are most in need. So we're going to take a time here. We're doing things just a little bit different, but I want to bring just a time for you and for me and Melissa. We're praying together. We're asking God, God, what will you have us do? What do you want us to do? And God gave me and her the same exact number without speaking. And I wrote it down in an envelope. I asked her what God spoke to her, and then I showed her the envelope because she had the same exact number. I know what God wants to do. He wants us to be used to help other people in a time of need. So I'm going to be just taking just a moment here. I want all of us just to take a minute. The usher's going to come forward. Or Aaron's going to just be playing a little bit behind us. But let's just take a moment to pray within our own heart, maybe with our family, if you're here with your family, and just ask God, God, what do you have me do? Maybe a penny is a stretch for you right now like it was for the widow in the days of Jesus. It's not about what you give. It's about the heart condition when you give it. When you've asked God and heard him and you step out in faith, I know that God will bless you. Let's take some time of reflection and just ask him right now what he'll have us do. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. I pray that you would speak to our hearts of what you would have each and every one of us do. And Lord, we stand together as a family. We know that we can touch people with our giving, but we know we can even touch people greater with our prayers. So today we stand as a family. And Lord, we pray for those that are hurting, those that are suffering, those that have lost everything for those mothers that are holding their children right now trying to figure out, Lord, where to go. For those fathers, God, that are trying to figure out how to protect and how to lead their family through such a time as this. For the single parents, Lord, who worked all their life just to barely get by and now they're facing a calamity that's beyond their comprehension. I pray now with this church family, God, that our prayers will be felt our prayers will be heard, and that our prayers will be answered, God. I pray that you would go and use your church, use your people from all over Texas. Let your light shine through your families throughout this great state. And I pray, God, that we would be a beacon of hope, Lord, that we would be hope to that despair, that we would be faith to that fear, that we would be love, God where love is needed the most. I pray now, and we blanket and cover each and every one that has lost a loved one. We pray for those that are having to completely relocate their lives. We pray, God, that you would have their steps ordered before them, that you would watch after them, guide them, lead them. And, Lord, we pray that you would use this harm, turn it for your good, and that you would win more and more into your kingdom through this time. We pray for our state. 
We pray for the funding to be used the way it should be. We pray over these mission organizations that are already poised and ready to help. We pray, God, for wisdom, for knowledge. And we're thankful that you have blessed us to be a blessing to others. I pray over every single gift and every single giver that is stepping out in faith and obedience and sacrifice. I pray, God, that every gift would go beyond its measure. And I pray that it would come back as a blessing upon each and every one that gives. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity to be a part of helping those that are in very dire need of our help. In Jesus' name. I'm going to ask if we could just keep our heads bowed, our eyes closed. Often in times of disaster, people self-reflect. They're trying to sort through where life is at, where their life is at, what it means, how to move forward. I don't know where you're at today in your walk with God, but I don't want to walk out of this building without giving you an opportunity to make sure that your heart is in the right place with God that your eternity is secure in heaven as if you are already there. If you're here today and you don't know that you know in your heart that you are where you need to be with God, that you've been forgiven, you've been washed, you've been cleansed of every mistake you've ever made, or maybe you've prayed a prayer like this, but you feel like your life is not living up to that commitment you once made, then I want to give you the chance to recommit that decision today. If you're here and you want to say yes or recommit that yes to Jesus, I'm going to ask you on the count of three just to place your hand up nice and high in the air. And we're going to pray with you right there where you're at. If that's you and you want to say yes or recommit that yes on three, put it up. One, two, three. Can you put that hand up for me? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for those hands. For those of you that raise that hand, place it right on your heart. We're going to pray a prayer together and ask everybody here. Let's join in. And let's back them up as they make this their salvation prayer. Say it like this. Say, Jesus, I believe in you. You are the Son of God. You gave your life for me. Now I give my life to you. Forgive me for every sin, every mistake I've ever made. Give me a fresh start, a new beginning. From this day forward, I dedicate my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can we give those folks a big, huge congratulations?